What's going on everybody? So we just got the Diablo 4 quarterly update for December 2021. And if I remember correctly, this is going to be focusing on the end game systems of Diablo 4. So that's pretty exciting. I wasn't expecting to get this so soon because it feels like we just got the sound design one not too long ago, but I guess it is the end of the fourth quarter. So it makes sense. So let's dive in, see what we got. This already looks interesting. Looks like we're getting some kind of talent tree that l reminds me a bit of Path of Exile. So let's go through this and see what we got. Hello and welcome to the year-end Diablo 4 quarterly update. We hope you enjoyed October's deep dive into sound design, the atmospheric ambient tracks, and peeking behind the scenes of how game sounds are made. Since our last blog, we've been hard at work adding new content and systems to the game. We've made big strides with every build of the game containing a host of expanded content, new art, balance changes, and other iterations. In fact, the team is currently playtesting an internal release of the game that represents a significant milestone. We have much to share with you today as a result, so let's dive in. First, our lead systems designer will discuss updates to key elements of itemization. These include the return of plus skills on items, okay, taking that from Diablo 2, a new way to interact with legendary powers, and some early work on targeted drops. After that, grab a warm beverage and a comfortable chair as he walks us through Diablo 4's completely new endgame character growth system, the Paragon Board. Okay, so that reminds me of Paragon Points in Diablo 3. That's interesting. Next, our lead visual effects artist will describe the philosophy that allows our talented VFX team to create huge explosions and eye-popping skill effects while keeping the game clear and readable, even when there are many players and monsters on the screen at the same time. He'll also go into detail on how Diablo 4's new game engine has allowed us to make frame-by-frame -frame combat more precise and nuanced, while leveling up our effects to take advantage of the new lighting system. Finally, feast your eyes upon a plethora of skills across all four announced classes that show off our skill-driven death system. We hope you enjoy this update and look forward to your thoughts and reactions. We'll be back in the new year and are ever grateful to have you with us on this journey. Joe Shelley, Game Director, Diablo 4. All right. The itemization of Diablo 4. Greetings, Heroes of Sanctuary. We're thrilled to once again dole out a whole heap of info on the state of systems and end game in Diablo 4. Today, I'm gonna share some details on two major features of Diablo 4, itemization updates and our plans for Paragon, plus skill rank affixes. In Diablo 4, the plus skill rank affix returns. As players invest points and skills, they grow in potency, and finding items with plus skill rank can speed that along. As a bonus, when the player equips an item with plus skill rank for a skill they haven't learned, they will have access to that new ability. It's a great way to try out new skills before you're able to invest in them. Getting a lucky drop that nets you a skill you'd like for your build 10 levels before you would otherwise have access to it is a huge boost. Okay, so that's neat. So a magic item that includes a skill rank affix. Slowing large axe of flaying. A magic two-handed axe with slashing. Uh, so that gives four ranks to flay. So items can give a pretty big boost to certain abilities, which is nice. Plus four sounds huge. Legendary and unique items. As Joe Shelley discussed back in our December 2020 update a whole year ago, legendary and unique items remain a core part of the Diablo item chase experience. We've made a foundational change to legendary items in Diablo 4 by allowing legendary powers to appear on multiple item slots. Now, if you're searching for a legendary power, like martial arts, which enhances the barbarian's kick ability, you may find it on rings, chest plates, or helmets. There's no need to hunt for a specific item type any longer. Now the real question is what happens when you find a power on an axe when you really wanted it on a ring? Or you found a great legendary amulet, but you can't use the power? Well, that's when we get to introduce our new friend, the Occultist. Where, where's your face? Anyways, the Occultist can extract a legendary power from the legendary item, crystallizing it into essence while destroying the item in the process. That essence can then be implanted into another legendary item, overriding the power that was present in the item at the time. Essence materials can also be stored and used at a later time. Unique items cannot be modified in this way, keeping their fantasies intact. And as their name implies, unique. Okay, so this whole system reminds me a lot of the archive of Tal Rasha Kanai's cube recipe from Diablo 3, which lets you extract legendary powers and apply it to your cube. Um, but it seems like we're instead going to be able to apply it to other items. All right, so what they're showing here is this axe has this fury skills deals 4% more damage for every second you haven't used fury skill up to 24%. And we didn't want it on this axe, so then we destroy the axe and we turn it into this pent up glowing essence here, which then we can apply it to another one handed weapon, a two handed weapon and the power increases, or we can apply it to gloves, amulets or rings. And with amulets, it also increases the power. That's interesting that different 
different item slots gets different power bonuses. And then it shows that we're, we can take rare items to apply these powers to. This one, they're showing a different example. They're showing a whirlwind ability here. But so we take the yellow items to apply the legendary powers to, which makes the rare item a legendary. That's pretty neat. It actually makes rares way more impactful, which they've always been really strong. But now it makes them probably best in slot in a lot of cases, I'm assuming. Hunting for item. Sanctuary is a vast world, filled with forlorn trails through werewolf-infested forests, withered heaths crawling with cannibals, and fog-choked graveyards crawling with the restless dead. There are plenty of enemies and monsters for the hero to encounter. Each of these monsters seem to enjoy collecting certain types of items and will be somewhat more likely to drop those items than others. While bandits are fond of maces, crossbows, and boots, if you're hunting a new pair of pants, you do well to kill some of the drowned instead. Okay, so that's interesting. We'll have to farm certain monster types if we're looking for certain kinds of items. I do like that. That way, if we're looking for a specific kind of item, we know where to go in the world to find it a little bit. It's not like Diablo 2 where you have to farm certain areas that are level 85 for certain items or Diablo 3 that it's just basically completely random unless you're talking about bounty caches. There's a certain monster type that drops certain items and if you want those kind of items you go farm those certain monster types and I like that. That's, that's an interesting change. In past discussions we've received feedback that it seems deflating for so much of a character's power to be delivered through the gear that they have equipped. Okay so that's definitely a conversation about Diablo 3 where your gear is everything. Customizing and planning a character feels less rewarding if it doesn't play a big role in how the character performs in combat. We hear you loud and clear, and in Diablo 4, we've placed a stronger emphasis on character power that is earned by all the little decisions you make while leveling up and exploring the world of Sanctuary. While we aren't talking about everything we have planned for character power today, I'm happy to talk about one feature in particular, the Paragon Board. In Diablo 4, we've placed a heavy emphasis on build customization, ensuring that you can have plenty of control over how your hero grows. The Paragon Board unlocks for each class at level 50 and is a distillation of this focus. Your hero begins their journey through the Paragon system at the central starting tile of their class's intro board, and from there, you make selections radiating outward. Once your hero reaches a gate tile, you'll choose which new Paragon board you would like to attach to at that location. The desired outcome is a personalized set of bonuses that will empower your hero and honor your dedication to their progression that will remain fun to tweak and adjust over many playthroughs. There's a lot to take in with the image below, so I'll walk through some of the aspects of what we're looking at here. Okay, this is deep. Definitely not final artwork because this looks like something someone didn't paint. And this is overwhelming for sure, so let's see what they have to say. The Paragon board is comprised of many fixed tiles. As the Barbarian earns experience, they will earn Paragon points, which are used to unlock a connected tile. There are a few varieties of tiles that I want to walk through. At first glance, this feels a lot like Path of Exile, but it also kind of reminds me of the Sphere Grid system from Final Fantasy, I think, 10? Normal tiles. These tiles are straightforward, providing a small but meaningful stat boost. Normal tiles are connective tissues that can be found throughout the board and are quite common. Magic tiles. Magic tiles are found in clusters throughout the board and provide a potent, more diverse set of benefits. As you might expect, they're less common than normal tiles, but still plentiful. Rare tiles. Rare tiles offer significant boosts in power. Upon entering the Paragon board for the first time, these represent great goals for the player to chase, particularly once you've narrowed builds down towards highly specific goals. Rare tiles also have additional powers that unlock once the hero has raised an attribute to a sufficient level, requiring some choices to be made when plotting your path through the board. Okay, so rare tiles are probably the yellow ones. Let's keep reading. Legendary tile. After the first Paragon board, each new board has a single legendary tile that can be found at its center. Legendary tiles impart a new legendary power to their character that earns it. Okay. So going back to here, it looks like these symbols here go to new boards. And each new board, you come out the other side probably, and then you work towards the middle to get the legendary power. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so these are examples of the different tiles. So a normal one is gray, something like five strength. Okay, magic is like 10 fire resistance. Rare grants 10 fury per kill, requires 175 strength, 125 willpower, 8% increased maximum fury. Okay, so they have strength and willpower requirements. So just by getting it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get that. Interesting. Legendary Warbringer. While your fury is above 50%, you deal 30% more damage. Okay. 
Um. Oh, wait. Are these orange colors? Is that indicative of what this particular example has chosen? That's what it looks like. Okay. So it doesn't seem like it's actually showing any of the magic tiles, unless he happened to already cover all of them. But that would mean that there's not that many on the board since these whole sides have no blue on them whatsoever. Okay, okay. Glyphs and sockets. A socket is a special tile that can contain a glyph. Glyphs are items found throughout Sanctuary that when embedded into a Paragon board, confer various benefits based upon the number of active tiles within their radius. Okay, so that's probably what we're seeing here. This is like a socket, so when you put something in it, all of these tiles that are grabbed give you bonuses? That's neat. Okay, okay. Glyphs can also be leveled up by delving into some particularly dangerous dungeons. Leveling up a glyph extends the radius of their effect, allowing each one to draw power from or impart power to even more active tiles. So a magic glyph has a small radius and grants 30% bonus to all nodes within range. A rare one can have a medium or large. For every 10 dexterity purchased within range, you deal 13.5% increased damage to vulnerable targets. Grants 40.5 bonus to all nodes within range. Okay. For every 10 willpower purchased within range, you deal 31.5% increased overpower damage. Grants 4 strength for each willpower purchased within range. This sounds like a super complicated system that's definitely going to take a while to learn how to master. It definitely seems like having an optimal build is going to take a lot of work to get all the right pieces for it, which also means that characters could vary quite a bit from player to player, which I like. Uh, I'm going to be really curious to see how this all plays out. Gate tiles and board selection. A single gate tile lies at each edge of the Paragon board. As you progress through the Paragon board, you will eventually reach a gate tile, which upon unlocking will allow you to select a new Paragon board to attach to your existing board. Each of these boards has unique tile layouts, new magic and rare tiles, and a new legendary tile at the center. The Paragon board is extended from these gate tiles. Upon selecting from the Paragon board list, you will be able to place the board down, connecting it to the newly unlocked gate tile. You may also optionally rotate that newly placed board. Whew. Okay, so that reminds me a lot of the talent system in Wolsen, how there's like three rings that you can rotate to kind of choose how you want to build your character. That's also super interesting. I like that. Again, it just adds another layer of complexity. We're hard at work on these and other features that we'll be able to share more about in future updates. Though for now, that's all from the systems team. Thanks for reading, and please share any feedback you have on social media, Reddit, or our forums. We'll see you in hell. Okay, that's a lot.